Hi, today I want to talk about the tools that I use to do the work that I do. A common question on this channel has now been, how do I use this? Where do I buy this? What is the name of that thing you're using in this video? And I haven't really gone over the tools as much as I should have. So I've gone over the mindset of how to perform some of the repairs that I do. I've gone over how I'm thinking. I've gone over how I get into it and how I do the work. But I haven't actually gone over what I'm using, and I want to start doing that today with this playlist. So this is going to be a playlist on the channel where I go over the tools that I use for the jobs that I do, and I'm going to go over why I like that specific tool for this specific job. Every single tool, I mean every tool that I talk about here, is going to be a tool that within one month returns you some type of money, or at the very least is so cheap that it doesn't really matter that you buy it. So when I talk about tools and whether or not you should buy them, or whether or not it's a waste of money, my idea of wasted money on a tool is a tool that within one month will not return me its value. So let's say I buy a tool to you know, fix the corners in an iPhone. I've been doing that for six years. Six years with a flathead screwdriver and a titanium stick. Not once in six years have I lost business. Not once in six years has somebody been angry because of what I've done with this product. Therefore, I would consider a tool to fix the corners on an iPhone a waste of money because I can already do that work with the tools that I have and it takes me about I would say a good 20 to 40 seconds with the tools that I have. So if I were to buy something, not only would I be spending hundreds of dollars on bits and all the little tools for it, but I'd also spend time learning it, I'd spend time putting it on there and everything, and it would just wind up being a complete waste of time. There are tool, and, and that's just one of the examples of something that I personally would not buy. Again, if it works for you, it works for you, and that's great. But the tools that I focus on, the tools that I'm going to focus on in this playlist, are tools that are going to actually make you back money that you would not have made without the tool. And if I do talk about a tool that's not really going to make you back money, it's going to be something that's really, really cheap that makes your life a lot, lot easier. The first tool I'm going to talk about today in this video is this Amscope SE 400Z microscope. This is imperative to a lot of the work that I do. I would not be soldering an LVDS connector without this microscope. I would not be soldering 0201 resistors without this microscope. I am doing jobs that make me two, three, or four hundred dollars on a regular basis that I would not be able to do without this tool. And this tool cost me $175 when I bought it new. I got this thing new with free shipping from Amazon for $175. Now, there are a couple of reasons that I recommend this tool over other microscopes. The first is that you actually have some working distance between the microscope and you. So when you set up the light, you have this much space to work with. So let me just take an iron, for example, here. Let's get some of this microphone wire so I can move over here. So here is a HACO 936 soldering iron. So I'm going to put it on the desk. And look, you have all of the space to work, and that's straight up and down. Now, if you were soldering like this, look, you, got, you have a lot of working space here before you have any issues with running into it. Now, there are other microscopes out there that I like, but they don't have that working range. Again, the one that I'm using here for this video, ironically, it has almost no working range for me. So let's turn around to the desk and sh try and show you that. So this microscope here, again, I love this microscope. This microscope is amazing. It lets me do great videos. But look at the working range I have between the board. This is a fucked board I was stealing stuff off of anyway. So never mind the fact that it looks like dog shit. But you see this? From the table to here, look at this. Like from here is all I have. All the space up here. I can't use because the microscope itself doesn't have that, that range. I have to be very close to the item in order for it to be in focus in that microscope. And one of the coolest things about this Amscope that I'm showing you here is that it doesn't have to be that close in order to be in range. You can have it pretty far away and you can still get yourself a really, really good picture. So that's one of the things that I value about it. And again, this is one of those things where when you're buying this stuff on the internet, it, it, you, know, you see all these specifications, but you don't see any of the specifications that actually matter to you. You see all these things and people are going over all these different aspects of the device but they don't go over what you're actually interested in. And I haven't seen many microscope websites that have these kind of spec sheets where they show you the things I'm actually interested. I want to know if I have this something over here, how far away does the microscope head have to be in order for me to see it properly? I want to know, like, can I fit a soldering iron in here? And they go over all the different lens types and all the different focusing types and what the, you know, what the stand is made of and whether this is a twist thing or a switch thing. They go over every single damn thing 
except for what I'm actually interested in. And since I actually do this for a living, I figured I would point out what it is I liked about this and what it is you should look for. So the first thing, the first thing above all else that you want is working viewable range. And this gives you that. The second thing you want is the ability to actually uh, put it up on a stand so that you can work with it. Now, there are a lot of stands, and I know this seems silly, but you actually touch the thing and it just knocks over like this. Good luck knocking this over. This is a very, very sturdy stand, and it's also magnetic, which means you can put things like DC inboards on it. You can put screws uh, on little magnets that, that are holding everything. So I very frequently have heat sink screws here and DC inboards when I'm working on the machines. It's very, very convenient. And the other thing about it is the default magnification is exactly what you want. So I'm going to post a couple of pictures here. And again, I don't have a microscope camera for this one. I only have a camera for that other microscope. So these pictures that I'm posting were taken off of an Android phone. So I took my Samsung Android phone, my S3, and I put the camera lens to the lens of the microscope, very high tech here, and that's how I got these pictures. And they still look pretty damn good. Again, it's, it's an Android phone looking into a microscope, but still, you get the idea that you can do very, very good work with this. Now, there are some downsides to it. Firstly, this comes with 10x and 20x lenses. The 20x lenses are completely worthless. This other microscope that I have has a switch over here. So you switch between 1x and 3x over here, and it has 10x eyepieces. That is cool. This one has 1x down here, and you switch between 10 and... Um, 20x up here. That sucks because the 10x eyepieces look like this, usable. And then you have the 20x eyepieces that look like this, which is it's like looking through a keyhole. Whoever designed that 20x eyepiece, that must have been like an April Fool's joke at Amscope because you can't really use it for anything. But when you use this microscope at 10x, you can very clearly see an entire QFN package. You can very clearly see a small 0201 resistor. You can very clearly see an LVDS connector, and you can very clearly do the work. So this is a very, very low-cost tool that is going to allow you to perform repairs that you would not have been able to perform form if you did not have it. This tool will make you back much, much more than that $175 inside of a month, and that is why I recommend this tool, and that is why I think you should buy it. So if you are in the market for a microscope, I, you know, again, you can do amazing things with the magnifying glass. I, I would just go get the microscope. Again, it's going to save you a lot of hassle in the long term. It's going to allow you to perform repairs that you could not perform before. It's going to make its money back, and then some in a month, so long as you actually get in some work that requires you use it. And it's fairly affordable. Again, $175 in free shipping on Amazon. An SE400Z microscope from Amscope, I definitely recommend this thing if you're new to, the, if you're new to these repairs and you want to get started on them.